His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received a written letter from His Majesty King Abdullah II bin Al Hussein of Jordan with an official invitation to visit Jordan. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation and his acceptance of the invitation from the Jordanian monarch. The Jordanian ambassador to Bahrain and dean of the diplomatic corps, Rami Saleh Awarikat, delivered the letter to His Majesty the King while he was received at Sofriar Palace. His Majesty the King healed historical ties and deep-rooted relations between the two kingdoms and the level of cooperation, coordination and joint action they reached in all fields to achieve the common interests and aspirations of further progress and growth. His Majesty expressed appreciation and pride in the efforts of the Jordanian monarch in consolidating bahraini jordanian ties, healing Jordan's historic role in protecting the interests of the Arab nation and its gains, as well as supporting joint Arab action and achieving peace and stability in the region. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree 18 of 2024, naming the administrative body and minister responsible for implementing the provisions of Law 22 of 2006 on the protection of copyright and related rights, based on a proposal of the Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. Article 1 stipulates that the Ministry of Information is the administrative authority responsible for implementing the provisions of Law 22 of 2006 and the Minister of Information shall be responsible for implementing the law. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and promulgated Law 2 of 2024, endorsing Bahrain's accession to the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture, following the approval of the Shura and Representatives Councils. Article 1 stipulates that it has been approved that Bahrain accedes to the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture, which was adopted by the 31st session of the Conference of the Food and Agriculture Organisation of the United Nations, held in Rome on November 2, 2001, which is attached to this law. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chair at the weekly cabinet meeting at Agadebia Palace. His Royal Highness directed for the continuation of the implementation of the economic recovery plans, priorities and programmes, which encompass major development projects and the streamlining of commercial procedures to enhance their efficiency. His Royal Highness noted that these measures will foster economic growth, expand the total size of the economy, meet the kingdom's development and sustainability goals and generate opportunities for Bahraini citizens. In regards to the economic recovery plans, priorities and programmes, the Cabinet welcomed the inauguration of the Customs Affairs Virtual Customer Service Centre. The Cabinet commended the Ministry of Interior's role in furthering the Kingdom's development. The Cabinet also welcomed the opening of Marassi Galleria, which showcases the advanced levels of collaboration between the private sectors of Bahrain and the UAE. The Cabinet then noted the participation of various authorities across the government and private sectors in Bahrain Sports Day, as well as the activities organised to promote sports as part of the Kingdom's national culture. The Cabinet commended the role of the General Sports Authority, headed by the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in his hosting of Bahrain Sports Day activities across all governorates of the Kingdom. His Royal Highness directed to double financial support for eligible individuals receiving social security and disability allowances in observance of the holy month of Ramadan. He also directed the Ministry of Social Development to distribute financial support prior to Ramadan to guarantee adequate living standards for citizens, particularly those in no-income groups. The Cabinet congratulated Kuwait, the Emir, the Government and the Kuwaiti people on the occasion of Kuwait Liberation Day. The Cabinet expressed its best wishes for further progress and prosperity for Kuwait and its people under the leadership of His Highness Sheikh Mishal Al Ahmed Al Jaba Al Suba. The Cabinet then approved the following. 
a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft law ratifying an agreement to attract and protect investment between the governments of the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs regarding topics in the draft agenda of the 159th meeting of the Ministerial Council of Gulf Cooperation Council. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning regarding the acquisition of several properties for the public benefit of urban development. And a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs and the Government's response to four proposals and a law proposal submitted by the Council for Representatives. The Cabinet then reviewed a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning regarding the progress of the third edition of the Housing Finance Exhibition and the launch of the updated version of the Baiti Real Estate Platform. This updated version includes 10,000 properties valued at over 1.07 billion Bahraini dinars in total. In addition, the Cabinet noted the following ministerial reports. Outcomes of the visits of Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and WAF to the United Kingdom. Outcomes of the participation in the 8th meeting of ministers responsible for tourism in the Gulf Cooperation Council. Outcomes of the participation in the Saudi Media Forum 2024. Declaring Maharak as a member of the UNESCO Global Network of Learning Cities 2024. Report of the Minister of Cabinet Affairs on external participations of various ministers and visits of foreign delegations to the Kingdom of Bahrain in March. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Sal Salman Al Musalim, and the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh and the Shura and Representative Council deputies and the heads of committees at Gadebia Palace. His Royal Highness emphasised the directors and visions of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa serve as a guide for government work streams. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad noted that the government, in line with His Majesty the King's directives and principles outlined in the National Action Charter, Bahrain Economic Vision 2030 and the Government Programme is committed to forging paths for progress ac across all sectors, in particular the private sector, which plays a pivotal role in driving economic growth. His Royal Highness highlighted that dedicated efforts continue to bolster strategies and economic priorities aimed at attracting investments, fostering economic growth, enhancing creativity, innovation and entrepreneurship, and expanding the economy to achieve desired goals. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad underscored the efforts to establish a better present and a prosperous future for the Kingdom and its citizens are at the forefront of the Kingdom's interests. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister emphasised the importance of coordination across all sectors to strengthen the Kingdom's national economy, positioning Bahrain as a model for others. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of continuing collaborative efforts between the legislative authority and the private sector to achieve the Kingdom's comprehensive development goals to benefit all. His Royal Highness noted that sustainable development requires the continuation of efforts to safeguard regional and international peace and are among the Kingdom's key principles. The Representative Council Speaker, the Chairman of the Shura Council and the Chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce, Samir Abdullah Nas, expressed the gratitude to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for his unwavering support in fostering collaboration and integration between the executive and legislative authorities, reaffirming His Royal Highness's commitment to achieving the Kingdom's development objectives for the benefit of Bahraini citizens. The Speaker of the Representative Council and the Chairman of the Shura Council affirmed that ongoing efforts are being made to achieve the Kingdom's aspirations. The Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce, Shamir Abdullah Nas, and a number of senior officials also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the ninth intake of the Prime Minister's Fellowship Programme at Gadebia Palace. His Royal Highness emphasised the Kingdom of Bahrain's commitment to invest in the national workforce and promote development, creativity and innovation in order to achieve the Kingdom's comprehensive development goals, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister affirms that Bahrain's growth and progress in various development paths were achieved as a result of the national workforce's determination, efforts and passion. His Royal Highness emphasised his pride in Team Bahrain for the efforts and contributions to the Kingdom's successes and achievements at various levels, urging them to continue their efforts to achieve the desired aspirations and goals. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister highlighted the efforts of the national workforce which have contributed to various successes and achievements. His Royal Highness extended his congratulations to the Fellows following their selection as part of the ninth batch emphasising the importance of utilising this opportunity to gain experience across government work streams and develop their abilities and skills which ultimately contribute to the programme's objectives and reflects on the development of government work streams. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister commended the Fellowship's administrators and staff for their contribution to advancing the programme's objectives. The members of the ninth batch of the Prime Minister's Fellowship Programme expressed their gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness and appreciation for His Royal Highness's commitment to supporting, developing and creating promising opportunities for the Kingdom's workforce. The Fellows also emphasised the determination to achieve further progress and prosperity for the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal Al Malki, also attended the meeting. A prominent initiative and a cornerstone for the advancement of government cadres in the Kingdom of Bahrain, past and future fellows work in the spirit of one team, Team Bahrain, in all fields of government work. This program comes in line with the vision of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to create national leadership cadres involved in the development of the Kingdom of Bahrain, as it was designed to assign young and distinguished Bahraini talents from government bodies for a period of one year to the office of the Prime Minister and train them at a high level in order to serve their basic work in their original government workplace. The vision of His Royal Highness and developing government cadres aims to raise the level of young nationals professionally by subjecting them to intensive training programs, in addition to enabling the delegates to become closely acquainted with the mechanism of making and implementing government policies and programs through their work. His Royal Highness directed the formation of a committee responsible for following up on the program's members after their graduation, noting the efforts of those in charge of the program and their role in creating development opportunities for its members in line with the desired goals and aspirations. Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, His Majesty deputised the National Security Advisor and Commander of the Royal Guard Lieutenant General, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to attend the inauguration ceremony of the Professional Institution for Maintenance, Training and Manufacturing Development in the presence of the Commander of the Royal Guard Special Forces, Staff Colonel His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, coinciding with the 56th anniversary of the establishment of the BDF. Upon arrival, His Highness Sheikh Nasser was received by the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Thiab bin Saga al Nuemi, and senior BDF officers. The ceremony began with the Royal Anthem, followed by recitations of verses from the Holy Quran. The acting director of the institution then delivered a speech in which he thanked His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, and Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa the BDF Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and His Highness Sheikh Nasser. A commemorative gift was then presented to His Highness Sheikh Nasser and His Highness Sheikh Khalid. His Highness Sheikh Nasser then unveiled the commemorative plaque marking the opening of the facility. His Highness then toured the facility and was briefed on its modern ins inspection, maintenance and development techniques. 
Sheikh Nasser stated that the institution will be a qualitative addition to the BDF's advanced systems, which embodies the vision of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. His Highness noted that the institution is considered the first professional institution to develop manufacturing and enhance efforts in the field of inspection and maintenance, adding that these vital projects will raise the efficiency of human resources and the professional level to achieve the desired goals. He hailed the outstanding level of the institution's affiliates, expressing thanks and appreciation for the efforts of the officers, non-commissioned officers and individuals in serving the nation, wishing them all success. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Education Charitable Trust, Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Labour Fund at Tamkeen, and Chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the final day of the Saudi Cup at King Abdulaziz Racetrack, organised by the Jockey Club of Saudi Arabia. His Highness emphasised the ongoing success of the Saudi Cup, which has garnered attention of its elite horses, both regionally and globally. He highlighted the commitment of Bahraini stables to compete in the Saudi Cup to gain valuable experience and contribute to the development and competitiveness of horse racing in Bahrain. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman noted that the participation of Bahraini stables in the Saudi Cup reflects the cooperation of regional and international horse racing clubs, expanding the international participation of Bahraini stables in more races and yielding numerous favourable results. His Highness commended the efforts of the Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Horse Racing Club and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Supreme Equestrian Authority of Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness Prince Banda bin Khalid Al Faisal, and expressed his wishes for Saudi Arabia to achieve further successes and make further achievements in the field of horse racing. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman congratulated the winners of the Saudi Cup and extended his wishes for the continued success. The most notable Bahraini horses in the Saudi Cup were Bailan of Adiat at Racing, which finished third in the race six of the 1351 Turf Sprint, Caliph of Victorious, which finished third in race seven of the Neum Turf Cup over 2100 metres, and Gorm, owned by Mohammed Khaled Abdul Rahim, which finished fifth in the International Handicap Race.
On behalf of the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isid bin Salman Education Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Labour Fund at Tamkeen, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended the annual 2023 awards ceremony for the rescue teams organised by the Royal Life Saving Bahrain RLSB. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman highlighted the essential role of the Kingdom's first response rescue teams in protecting the lives of beachgoers and water sports enthusiasts. His Highness noted the RLSB's ongoing efforts in upholding best safety practices to prevent accidents and injuries during water sports, strengthening safety procedures and raise awareness on the protection of individuals. He noted His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman's commitment to, support, to supporting the RLSBs, commending the efforts of its personnel and volunteers in protecting lives and ensuring the safety of water sports participants. During the ceremony, the chairperson and founder of the RLSB, Her Highness Sheikh Anayla bin Hamad bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, delivered an address, which expressed gratitude to His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman for his patronage of the 2023 rescue team ceremony. Her Highness also expressed thanks to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman for attending the ceremony on behalf of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman. Her Highness Sheikh Anayla highlighted the accomplishments of the rescue teams and volunteers that have been achieved through their dedicated efforts to ensure the safety of all beachgoers across Bahrain. She affirmed that spreading awareness about the safety of beach visitors is a shared responsibility. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman presented the RLSB team with honorary shields for their dedication and for protecting the lives of beachgoers across the six beaches in Bahrain. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif Al Ziani, delivered a speech before the 55th session of the Human Rights Council. The Minister said that Bahrain welcomes the periodic meetings of the Human Rights Council and considers them a valuable opportunity to highlight the progress and achievements made in supporting human rights and the fundamental freedoms. The Minister expressed his regret that human rights in the world are being violated every day despite the fact that international laws and conventions have stipulated them and obligated countries to implement them. He added that the tragic situation in the Middle East continued for more than decades and has become more apparent due to the horrific scenes in the Gaza Strip due to the devastating war which continued for more than four months and affirms the urgent need for collective action to support and protect human rights for all. The Minister stressed that it is not possible to ignore the tragic situation of the people of Gaza, including killing, injuries, orphanage, displacement, deprivation of basic necessities such as food, water and medicine, the destruction of homes, schools and hospitals and the loss of medical care, especially the elderly, women and children. He said that the looming threat of launching an attack on the city of Rafah before the month of Ramadan as nearly one and a half million people have taken refuge in the city increases the need to address this humanitarian crisis. He stressed that the right to peace is fundamental to protecting all other human rights, especially the right to life, and without peace it is not possible to preserve the lives and well-being of vulnerable individuals and communities.
The past year has witnessed tangible and effective progress in upholding the highest standards of rights and fundamental freedoms in the Kingdom of Bahrain and ensuring their effective implementation and realization on the ground. We are proud that these principles and values which the Kingdom adheres to represent an essential part of the reform approach of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the direction of the government headed by His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Bahrainis well-established efforts to promote human rights include pioneering initiatives such as the alternative sentencing and open prison programs that are that have become a model for the rehabilitation of those convicted of crimes for reintegration into society. The Kingdom's continued Tier 1 ranking in the U.S. State Department's report on combating human trafficking for the sixth consecutive year is a statement to its dedication to the upholding of human rights. Our effective and independent oversight bodies have also continued their human rights work in line with their clear and effective duties and responsibilities and in a spirit of full transparency and openness. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain's continued implementation of its national human rights plan is the cornerstone of the Kingdom's commitment to move forward towards promoting human rights. The Kingdom of Bahrain's continued implementation of its national human rights plan, which outlines the human rights priorities and projects in the Kingdom with clear targets and measurable performance standards is the cornerstone of our commitment to human rights. The National Plan for Human Rights underlined the importance of solidarity rights, especially the promotion of the values of tolerance and coexistence, which the Kingdom of Bahrain has pioneered by launching many major initiatives to promote a culture of peace, dialogue, coexistence and understanding between religions, beliefs, countries and people. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also affirmed that achieving peace and security in the Middle East can only be done through the two-state solution, stressing that the recent events in the Gaza Strip urgently require sending a collective appeal to Israel to cease fire and end this painful tragedy. Of Bahrain is fully convinced that the Human Rights Council has an important and decisive role in upholding the right to peace for all, without exception, especially in the context of the ongoing tragedy in the Middle East and most recently in the Gaza Strip. The recent events in the Gaza Strip have highlighted the, the urgent need to make a collective and equivocal call on Israel for a ceasefire and to take all necessary measures to protect civilian lives. Avoid escalation and end this painful tragedy, calling also on both parties to release hostages and detainees immediately. The Kingdom of Bahrain believes that achieving security and peace in the Middle East is crucial for the benefit of all its people, which can only be achieved through the two-state solution, a secure and stable Israeli state and a secure, sovereign and viable Palestinian state capable for development, living in peace for the future and well-being of the two peoples. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Al Ziani, met in Geneva with the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates of Jordan, Dr. Ayman Safadi, on the sidelines of the 55th session of the Human Rights Council. The two sides discussed cooperation between the two countries and ways of further enhancing the historical bilateral relations. They also stressed the importance of continuing cooperation and joint coordination at the political and diplomatic levels regarding the issues and challenges facing the Arab world. The two sides also addressed the humanitarian conditions of the civilians in Gaza and the international efforts aimed at stopping the war, the importance of protecting civilians as well as delivering humanitarian aid and supporting the efforts aimed at achieving a just, lasting and comprehensive peace that consolidates regional security and stability.
The Institute of Public Administration launched a programme for preparing Bahraini cadres for external participations in the presence of the Japanese ambassador to Bahrain, Okai Osako, and Bahrain's ambassador to Japan, Ahmed al -Dosiri. On the occasion, the Director General of the Institute, Sheikh Dr. Rana bin Isa Al Khalifa, affirmed that Bahraini youth are a main pillar in developmental plans and that investment in the youth and their empowerment is one of the main goals of national plans and strategies that translate the visions of His Majesty the King with the follow up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, supported by the initiatives and youth projects developed by the representative of His Majesty the King for humanitarian work and youth affairs. She noted that through the programme, the Institute endeavours to provide specialised training for preparing Bahraini cadres, benefiting from the international internship programme by Tamkeen. Sheikh Dr Rana added that the programme aims to qualify and prepare participants through interactive training units. The non-oil sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain continues to make developmental achievements as a result of the efforts to increase economic diversification in light of the Comprehensive Developmental March, which achieved tangible economic development. More in this report. The Kingdom of Bahrain continues to make achievements during the prosperous era of His Majesty the King, with the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in various sectors, fields and at all levels. Among these sectors, the non-oil sector achieved progress in recent years as investment has increased in various sectors such as trade, industry, infrastructure, tourism, technology, education, scientific research, sports, entertainment, and many others. This led to providing new job opportunities and increasing its contribution to the GDP. Today, the Bahraini economy is considered a diversified, well-established, balanced, and sustainable economy. In the past few years, many goals have been achieved before they specified dates, which indicates the efficiency and quality of implementation. Among the sectors that have witnessed significant development are the financial projects sector, tourism and trade, in addition to real estate activities and business services, which have become one of the most important tributaries of the non-oil economy. This strong recovery comes in conjunction with the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to begin conducting consultations to formulate Bahrain's Economic Vision 2050, which reflects the benefit gained from the plan and its role in accelerating economic recovery in the Kingdom. As a result of the continuous efforts to increase economic diversification, the local economy is expanding into the non-oil sectors, as its contribution to the GDP at fixed prices reached 83.6% during the third quarter of 2023. The financial projects sector continued to lead for the fourth time in a row as its contributions to the GDP at fixed prices is estimated at 18.1%.